Mario with MIA Microflight and this is the MIA Piper Ultralight. I just finished this model. This one uses uh, carbon rods uh, as the uh, tail section and that's to keep uh, any unnecessary 3D printed parts from being utilized especially in the tail area and also the wings. The wings have ribs, but uh, very, they're very lightweight. Uh, the wings are foam, and so are the uh, tail sections, Depron, basically. Uh, this is uh, actually a uh, three millimeter Depron. I just finished the cowl. That's a 3D printed part, reinforced with carbon rods at the front end of the uh, cabin. This is a uh, decorative um, just decorative uh, foam, sticky foam that I applied here just to give it a little more detail and to enhance the uh, the side of the, the window or the windshield which carries all the way to the back on top of the aircraft. You can see also the, those black lines are, are also foam pieces just to decorate it a little better. Uh, those are some of the wheels that I've been uh, making as well. Everything's pretty much scratched down from uh, the bottom up. This one has flaps as well as uh, ailerons and the uh, radio or the receiver is just hanging loose uh, for the time being because I've been uh, uh, testing uh, uh, different radios. I am uh, waiting for some receivers that uh, um, I'm going to be utilizing this particular kit. That's not the receiver but it's what I had and so for testing the uh, servo control I had to use that. The speed control sits in front of the uh, cowl here, in, inside the cowl, and it's connected also to the receiver. The battery will sit in front of the front seat here at the bottom, at the bottom of the, uh, uh, the bottom of the floor of the, the cabin, and so that's why this is open here. I don't I don't like this cover on any of the uh, uppers, uh, just to keep it a little bit more uh, ultra light looking open frame. The true open frame design is I've been doing uh, many of the. Uh, kits that I saw here at the MIA Microflight. The uh, suspension is uh, your typical upper suspension, kind of done. Everything's done my way here with uh, my own methods and uh, approach to uh, designing uh, model aircraft uh, of this nature. This is a very lightweight kit, um, or I should say this is a very lightweight airplane. It's not a kit yet and I don't know if I'm going to turn this into a kit. This is uh, basically uh, the, the first uh, uh, kind of refined prototype because I say refined prototype because I've been making all the parts as I go along and I test fit them and then I keep refining them and, and, and keep uh, rechanging the parts once they're refined. Normally it takes me three times before I arrive at the, at the final part. So every part that you see here has gone at least three iterations before arriving at what you see here and this is just for uh, sometimes I design for um, uh, for looks sometimes I design for structural integrity uh, basically it's a combination it's a balancing act at uh, you know when you design models of this nature uh, and then weight is extremely important in my uh, uh, in my approach to designing models and so I like to keep things lightweight yet strong my models are if anything uh, about my models the kits that I produce here at my micro flight are very very lightweight yet strong True, true ultralights in the sense of the ultralight. I don't like to employ uh, materials um, that are going to be heavy in areas that are going uh, that need to be lightweight, such as the tail section and the wings. Therefore, the wings are very, very lightweight. A system there that is a 3D print or a Depron support where it's needed. Likewise, on the wing here, this one has uh, flaps as well as ailerons. It's got. Uh, one, two, three, four, five ribs, and they're very lightweight ribs. The ribs that need to be strong, need to, uh, I design them a little bit stronger, such as the ones that, that are holding the servos, and then the other auxiliary ribs, which are in between the, 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 uh, the, the uh, outer ones and the center one, are a little bit lighter because they don't need to be as strong because they're not holding servos. They're just there to maintain the airfoil. And so this model is very, very lightweight. Um, I believe this model is coming out at uh, 10, uh, 10, let's see, 10 ounces, 
and it's a 1.25 meter wingspan. And I say 1.25 because of the uh, scaling factor that I used from uh, the earlier one that I was designing, the 1.0, which is a uh, 1 meter uh, size. And then I went uh, to a 1.25. Okay, this is Mario again with MIA Microflight, and this is a Piper Light, an RC Ultra Light, based on the Piper design, which is uh, what the framework is about. But it's been made uh, lightweight, in other words, uh, no covering at the back. And basically, you can pretty much do any to that to any airplane. You can take the um, the covering from the especially from the tail section to keep it really lightweight open frame design and you can call them uh, uh, ultra lights this is a 1.25 meter wingspan and this one is actually based on the smaller version that I did the 1. Uh, uh, 1.0 or 1 meter wingspan so this is an up uh, scaled version of that and the reason I did that is to just get a, a different scales I like building in different sizes uh, because the small ones sometimes are good for the, the front uh, cul-de-sac or the backyard but sometimes I feel like going to the park here at the nearby park and I don't like to fly the big ones there so this is a good size for that uh, and the uh, more larger ones uh, such as the quarter scale two meter wings um, about that size are better for the uh, larger parks but to go to those parks sometimes is a, it's a little bit of a, a little bit of a, an effort uh, for me because the parks are not nearby those uh, fl uh, the, the flying field for the larger aircraft so I build them in different scales for that reason and this is uh, the 1.25 meter and you can see the seats there I, I painted the seats and uh, when I painted the seats, they came out really, really nice. Um, I decided uh, to uh, paint the next one I do. This is uh, basically just a prototype right now. But the next one I do of this particular size uh, or any larger size, I think I'm going to paint the frame. And then uh, also the seats because uh, the seats came out really, really nice. And I hope this video can capture there. I'm videotaping with my cell phone and it's hard to see in the sun, the bright side light uh, in my uh, viewer. It's hard to see in the sunlight uh, through my cell phone here. The, the screen is, is, um, is dark and I, I can't see it that well. But um, yeah, I think uh, next one I'm going to paint it, but this one I, I wanted to leave it in white. Just the uh, stock material, 3D printed uh, material. So this is not a full 3D printed airplane. It's, I don't like building full 3D printed airplanes and so I just like uh, using 3D printed parts only as necessary. Um, most of, uh, in fact all of my airframes that I build for uh, miniature aircraft are made from carbon rods. Uh, some are 3D printed parts, the larger ones uh, include aluminum uh, uh, tubes and aluminum pieces and nylon uh, and metal hardware. So they're very, very uh, resilient to crashes and very durable, and, and they also last a long time. And as compared to, uh, say, a balsa model that's got to be built, you know, from little pieces, you know, one good crash, that's it. Very similar to 3D printer airplanes, full 3D printer airplanes. That uh, if you watch all those videos on 3D printed airplanes, the way they crash, one crash, that's it. You know, people have to go back and either give up or go back and print another another uh, airplane which takes a long long time these parts as you see them here you know the wing uh, ribs the side uh, frame uh, they make uh, the main body of it and some of these parts that you see in white in the back my hinges you know they take a they take a little bit of time you know to do them uh, you know if we consider a full airplane you know that they, they can take a uh, you know, a week to, to print one full airplane. Unless you have a lot of machines, you can print, uh, you know, different parts in various machines. Uh, you can do that, but not, not many people have a lot of machines. Most people have one machine, maybe two, three. And so uh, 
uh, you know, it's it's a time-consuming process, but I don't like crashing things I, I, in, in breaking them. And that's the reason why I started in my microflight uh, doing uh, ultralights and microlights is because uh, the way I design these uh, microlights and ultralights, uh, I rarely have broken one of them. Maybe uh, in, a, in a hard crash, uh, bent landing gear or... or uh, uh, bent tube, but that's about it. You know, there's no uh, there's no rebuilding or having to trash the model in the in the trash, uh, such as uh, what happens with balsa models. You know, when you crash a balsa model, that's it. You know, uh, and very similar to uh, 3D printed uh, full 3D printed airplanes. And so this is the MIA Piper Light, as I'm calling it, ultra light. And it's got all my own uh, details and uh, techniques in uh, design, uh, mechanical uh, uh, construction and approach, and it's done uh, my way, you know, with the carbon rods as, uh, as I've been doing uh, all my RC micro lights and ultra lights for the past uh, 20 years in kit form, the ones that I sold via my website. Uh, this one uh, uses a foam, uh, this is a foam. Uh, Parts, the ailerons, the uh, uh, the flaps, and the wing that's going to go here next. I didn't want to put the wing just yet because I wanted to show. It, I wanted to show the uh, the, the rib and, and how the wing uh, looks before gluing the, the wing on top. The, the the wing will be glued to this section here. Here, this is why these uh, ribs are a little bit wider so they can take the uh, they can uh, adhere better to the foam once the, that is. Uh, that is glued in place. Uh, I don't use uh, hot, uh, hot melt uh, glue because hot melt glue tends to eat the foam. The wheels are also, everything here is done from basically from scratch using uh, 3D views of the real Piper aircraft. Uh, I bring the, the real uh, Piper aircraft uh, 3D views into the computer and then I start uh, building from that point on. And it's a very laborious process because it, uh, you know, you have to basically start from from scratch. You have to start reconstructing the model as applicable to what you want the model to to be and and to do and how you're going to print it. So there's a lot of thought process that goes into uh, building, uh, designing, and building one of those. Basically, re-engineering for a radio control. And there are ways that I like to approach it. These things that I have uh, uh, mastered and. Uh, um, over the years that I uh, continually use because they work and so a lot of my designs follow the same uh, format and that's why a lot of the airplanes that you see here are uh, share similar uh, assembly techniques you know I use carbon rods like you see them here uh, some other people that build uh, models they, they go the traditional way of, of building a lot of ribs and then they have a, a wooden spar, a wooden, another uh, a center spar, and a rear spar. And then from there, they, they build up the, the, the wings on top. I, I don't do that. I use carbon rods for leading and trailing edges uh, consistently on all my products. And if you look at some of the early products that I, I've done before, you'll see the same elements uh, being used. Uh, and it's because over the years, I, I learned you know what not to do and, and how to build things properly. So this is the proper way to design and, and build a model in my opinion and it, uh, something that's going to uh, withstand uh, you know some uh, crashes this is Mario with MI Microflight and this is uh some of the work that I've been doing on this uh, MIA Piper Ultralight. Some people may think that this is a Savage Bobber. It is not. It is uh, the Piper uh, airframe, true, which is what the Savage Bobber is uh, based on. And so this one is done from scratch. Is all the stuff that I do here at MIA Microflight is done. Um, some uh, 3D views of the Piper aircraft, the real thing. And I like to use these as my reference. 
although I don't make them uh, too too to that scale of the reference uh, joints because in radio control you almost always have to employ your own uh, techniques depending on um, what your end goal is. Uh, my end goal with these uh, models is to um, not only to uh, have a flying model that is uh, super super lightweight but it's also extremely durable and this is the reason why I do these things the way I do them and I talk about it in my videos because uh, other people tend to just uh, whip out these things uh, without uh, thinking too um, much on the uh, details that need to be thought out when you're designing for uh, performance and for durability and longevity is the way I like designing radio control airplanes. So that's what you're looking at here. The airframe is very lightweight, it's even lighter than some of these Savage Barber uh, 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 Piper ultralights that uh, have come to the scene in the past uh, a couple years, radio control versions. This is a uh, even lighter one because I am employing only three connection points here via these uh, these rectangular sections here that are there to maintain uh, the shape of the carbon rod frame. I use carbon rods in my frames. I don't use full 3D printed parts and I try to um, use 3D printed parts uh, only as required, only as necessary because I believe that a full 3D printed airplane, now it's not that I believe, I know that full 3D printed airplane, uh, airplanes do not have the durability uh, or crashability as one of this caliber as you see in here done methodically and with the uh, right uh, materials and uh, at the right places. Mass distribution is a is a very important thing when considering uh, a design of uh, an aircraft. Mass distribution, the location where you want to concentrate uh, the mass but more important is where you want to keep things light it's very important in an aircraft in the tail section and the wings in my view have to be super super light, lightweight the lighter you keep those items or those sections the better the aircraft is going to perform and you put the mass where it where it should be you want stability you want to concentrate the mass below the uh, below the center of mass, not below the center of gravity. The center of gravity and center of mass are two different uh, points here. And uh, when you look into that, if you haven't looked into that, go find out, do a little research on the internet and you'll find out the differences between the two. And if you haven't found it, I uh, do believe I mentioned that uh, difference in another video. Uh, for simplicity, uh, <clears throat> Some uh, documentation tends to uh, mention that the center of gravity is basically where the center of mass concentrates at, and it's really not, really, because if you were to, um, say, um, if you were to hang this model from uh, two points to find the center of mass of any object, you basically you hang that object from two uh, different points, and where those uh, uh, perpendicular uh, pendulum lines intersect, that's your center of mass. You're going to find out that that's a little bit different location than where we typically balance our models when we do a CG balance. And so those are two different locations, two different things, not the same thing. But some documentation, documentation tends to generalize that as the same thing, which is not. So this is uh, the design. Uh, here I have the plate, and I do this uh, often because this is my 3D printed plate uh, section here that I that I like to uh, keep as my background. So when I'm laying out the parts, I'm about to lay out these parts here so that I can print these parts. I know exactly how many parts I can uh, lay down on the plate and print in one shot. And these are some of the other parts or basically some of the parts that encompass this full kit that I'm working on. Some of the 3D printed parts already that have been uh, 
assemble for printing and I've already been printing these uh, individually as uh, I typically do when I assemble uh, the prototypes and from there I refine the parts and I keep uh, refining them until you know they're as perfect as I can get them there are two seats here this seat on the right is uh, a lighter version of the one on the left uh, and this is what I mean by refinement If we do an x-ray vision of that seat, you're going to find that the wall thickness is a lot thinner on the right one than on the left one. You can see some of the lines there. I don't know if this video catches it, but... So the weight saving is almost half the weight saving, although they look very much the same. There is a difference between those two. And I do the same with all the parts. Once I get a part going, you know, my first uh, prototype is typically not uh, the last one. I typically go through three iterations before I, uh, I'm satisfied and, and it's, uh, it's a final part. And, but basically this is how I, I work all my designs and all my, my models. Uh, some of the uh, ribs, I don't employ full uh, wings with, uh, with a lot of ribs in it. It's, it's not necessary uh, when you uh, design for um, lightweight models. Uh, the traditional ways of building balsa models with a lot of ribs and uh, you know that uh, that could be employed here with 3d printed parts as well but um, you don't really need it if you uh, approach it from a different uh, angle and that's how I like doing things I mean there's so many ways to do models so many ways to design them to uh, to um, to assemble them it just depends what type of model are you looking to build, you know, what performance do you want out of it? What uh, durability do you want? It, what materials are you going to be using for it for for the aircraft? So I just wanted to get a video going here just to uh, discuss some of these things. And this is the way I like approaching my models and doing all the parts which are scratch. All the parts are done from scratch, from a reference, built directly from a reference. It's not a copy of somebody else's uh, design. It's my own, done from the bottom up, using real aircraft 3D views. This is Mario with MIA Microflight and this is another Piper. Um, it's going to be a, actually a Savage Bobber which is based on the Piper design. This is a Piper profile here and it's pretty much to the scale that I'm building this new one. Uh, you can see the 3D printed frame is already on top of this uh, uh, plan. It's a little bit smaller than the plan but that's fine because this is based on the uh, one meter or a thousand millimeters a wing span smaller version that I did uh, and I've been showing on some earlier videos so all that uh, framework and all the uh, 3d printed parts mainly at the front end of the aircraft there's no 3d printed parts whatsoever at the back except for the, the hinge uh, system here that's going to house the uh, uh, foam uh, vertical and horizontal stabilizer so the, those are the only 3d printed parts there it's not a complete 3d printed part uh, vertical stabilizer and horizontal stabilizer uh, system as some other videos show you know a full 3d printed airplanes tend to be heavy regardless of the material that you're using even if you use the light PLA it's still a little bit too heavy and the uh, drawback of that is that if you crash it's not going to be as resilient as a model that's built out of carbon rods as I'm doing as I've been typically doing all my micro lights and uh, ultra lights carbon rods mainly uh, for durability and longevity and so this um, idea with this 3D printer frame is just to establish a the framework the main fr framework from which to build in other words the base from which to build the uh, carbon rods and the, the boom so that it comes out nice and straight so that's the purpose of doing this this particular frame that you see here you can see the frame right there now I had to do this in two pieces because my machine is not big enough to uh, and to do the whole piece as one piece as the smaller versions are done in one piece so I had to break this 
uh, at this point, uh, but it, this can be joined actually with a couple of um, uh, gussets and that will uh, secure that in place. The motor mount is going to be very similar to the smaller ones. Uh, the, the landing gear is very similar to the smaller ones, same, same idea with a, with a wire that's embedded into the 3D printed part. That's a press fit design there, that's not going anywhere. And for additional uh, detail, I have these rubber bands that can mimic the uh, typical uh, uh, su suspension, uh, uh, the dead rubber elastic uh, bands that they have to uh, attach to the landing gears on the real Piper uh, aircraft and some other designs. Uh, this is the wheel that it's going to go on this particular size. This is also resized from a 3D printed uh, hub that I did earlier, much earlier for uh, radio control uh, um, go-karts. Um, I also did these for airplanes and so this is my wheel that I've been using for um, religiously basically on all my designs and so that's I, I really like that wheel and it took me a, a little time to, to come up with that wheel the way I wanted it, lightweight and so that is the uh, the hub that's going to go on this uh, wheel. This is also a custom made uh, um, a wheel here that you see here. It's very, very lightweight, um, made from um, a low density uh, polyethylene um, um, foam. Uh, th this is done in a mold. This is the, that's why this wheel came out so perfect. It's done in a, in a mold uh, and it's done uh, under pressure and with heat. That, that's the only way to get these things that we see them here, a very professional looking wheel. Uh, and so th that's how that's done. The, um, the wing will probably be uh, on this particular one because it's a little bit larger. I'm going to go with a double uh, sort of flat bottom uh, airfoil, Clark Wire, uh, Clark Wire air airfoil. And it'll house uh, both uh, ailerons as well as flaps. It'll take two, two additional servers per side of the wing. I don't like doing that on foamy models because uh, it, it tends to add a little bit of weight, but I think I can get away with some very tiny servos that I have. Uh, just considering the weight factor that I'm, I'm, I'm saving a lot of weight here in doing it the way I'm doing it with carbon rods and not using a full 3D printed tail section here, as some other videos show. So I'm saving quite a bit of weight and the way I'm doing my frames, they're, they're very, very lightweight. As you can see them here, they're, they're reinforced with carbon rods where it needs to be reinforced. This is also not a full 3D printed uh, uh, side uh, um, um, uh, front end. Is again some of the videos I showed that you know these are 3D printed uh, Savage Bobbers and some other airplanes that people are doing full 3D printed. It's, it's just crazy. Uh, it just blows my mind because uh, it's just the mentality in, in, in that alone from a crash standpoint is just not not within my reasoning. Uh, you, you know you have to keep the aircraft light lightweight mass. Distribution is very important on, on, on an aircraft, and uh, when you start, you know, condensing, when you start condensing or reducing mass in the proper areas, such as the tail end, the wings, um, you know, you end up with a much, much uh, better flyer, more efficient, easier to control, um, more resilient. It, it just has a lot of benefits from that uh, uh, point of view. So this is the another Piper. I mean, I'm, I'm going crazy building Pipers here in, in Savage Bobbers because I, I really like this design. And uh, here's an old one that I did a while, while back. I don't know, this model is probably old, over 15 years old. And one of the first ones. And uh, uh, you can see the boxy design. And I did this uh, rather quickly. I didn't, I didn't have a 3D printer back then. Same size as this one right here. It's a 30 inch front end to tail uh, uh, length uh, dimension, 30 inches. My smaller ones are 24, which yield a 1 meter uh, wingspan. This yields a 1.25 meter wingspan or 1250 millimeters in uh, in wingspan so it said you know all I did was scale my uh, um, my one uh, one meter wing to uh, 1.25 and I have one that's even a little bit bigger 1.5 and then I'm going to go to 1.75 and then I'm going to go to 2.0 which is uh, you know that's a quarter scale so um, I mean you can go crazy with this once you have the the, the, the main design you can just upscale that and that's basically what I'm doing here. In this video I'm going to be talking a little bit more about the uh, Piper uh, in the form of a Savage Bobber. Basically it's a Piper structure that has been reconfigured 
by the company that did the uh, full-scale aircraft and they made it uh, sort of a bush plane a more um, almost like a uh, uh, bobber like a Harley Davidson motorcycle is uh, what their description is, is in terms of uh, the design the open frame design but basically it's a Piper ultralight if you want to call it an ultralight um, I prefer to call it an ultralight because um, that's what it is it's uh, basically a uh, reduced uh, weight by removing the uh, covering at the tail section just keeping the airframe remo removing the doors and some of the uh, uh, walls that make up the sides of the uh, aircraft and you basically have an ultralight you know just a, uh, a frame uh, open frame design I've been designing uh, radio control micro lights and ultra lights if you uh, have uh, seen my stuff for the past uh, I don't know 30 40 years uh, when I started back in uh, the early 80s is when I started designing ultralights and micro lights and my intention was to uh, basically uh, design an aircraft that was very uh, durable uh, that was lightweight that was high performance and uh, that would uh, you know just have a lot of pluses from the uh, standpoint that uh, when you build an ultralight uh, aircraft um, provided you uh, maintain uh, proper uh, rigidity and structural integrity you end up with a basically a, a much much uh, more efficient uh, aircraft in terms of a flight uh, and also in terms of a uh, crashability my designs are all carbon frames to begin with and I employ uh, 3D printed parts only as required I don't do full 3D printed airplanes as some uh, companies and some individuals are doing uh, I just don't understand that uh, mentality and logic when you know when you're it, it, when you're looking for um, longevity and durability in an aircraft, you know it just doesn't make sense to me to do an aircraft uh, in 3D printer form, a full you know 3D printer of a body, and stabilizers, everything, um, and um, you know one good crash and that's it. You know you have to go back to the drawing board and basically reprint another airplane, which takes a long, long time. Not to mention that as well. So I only employ 3D printed parts as required and uh, methodically and uh, uh, design um, also for structural rigidity to complement the carbon mainly my the, the base material here that I use on all my ultralights and microlights and products that I manufacture here at MIM Microflight it starts with a carbon base structure so my, my that's why you see a carbon uh, booms here carbon rods all my ultralights uh, quicksilver uh, ultralights and uh, the other ultralights and microlights that I offer are also carbon structures and nylon wings to keep them extremely extremely low weight durable and high performing uh, you don't need a uh, brew power to uh, uh, to power the model and and so there, there are so so many benefits so the uh, designs that you see here I started with uh, uh, this one right here I actually I started with the previous one to this one and then I went to this one this one came out a little bit too heavy for my taste even though it's got all the neat neat little details here the seats have a little more detail into them into the design it's got the leather uh, luggage uh, bags and it's got a full 3d printed uh, profile for the foam inserts that would be the vertical stabilizers uh, horizontal uh, rudder elevator uh, and it's got my own type of connectors here these are uh, press fit connectors that make up all the joints for this particular frame so it's a little bit uh, different design than this one here and on this one here I decided to do a full frame uh, sides uh, the main frame in other words the main wall the main sides that uh, are the base for the supports of the carbon rods that make up the boom section you can see also these are reinforcements 3d printed very light parts very um, uh, done uh, methodically so that I end up with a, a lot lighter system or structure than this one right here this one here when you start printing even this here profiles it starts adding weight so if we just keep it foam just with carbon rods at the proper places for uh, a little more rigidity and squareness that's the way to do it and so this is a um, uh, my, my latest one here which is about the same size as this one here it's got a little different design I mean I tend to vary from design to design depending on what uh, materials I'm working with 
and so I um, I, I start with the uh, with the what I want the model to 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 do, what I want the model to be like, what weight do I want the model. Uh, basically, I start with a what type of performance do I want out of the model, and how much weight uh, am, am I looking to um, employ into the model, and where can I cut uh, uh, anything that uh, does not require mass. So mass is very important in air, in an aircraft, yeah, even in, in model form. You know, you got to keep the mass uh, low at, uh, you know, the key areas such as the tail section and the wings. I mean, that's, uh, uh, as far as uh, the stuff that I designed here, I don't like employing uh, uh, materials or I don't like designing things with it where it's going to be too heavy of uh, a mass in those specific areas that I mentioned. So this was coming out a little bit too heavy for, for the for my uh, my taste as I said uh, the rest of the aircraft is fine Car carbon uh, design but this is a, l a lot quicker so I, I did this one in view that I would uh, kit this make a, a kit for people to assemble them and so anytime that we manufacture or we design for manufacturing uh, for kits for other people we have to take into consideration that they may not have the tools or they may not have the, you know the skills that uh, the more pro pros I have uh, a frame like this, you know, it takes a it takes a lot more effort, you know, to to do versus a frame like this where you have a, you know, you have already this part already as the base, and all you have to do is insert that the rods, put a little CA glue, in, and start building from there. Uh, particular care does need to be employed in an assembly such as this one or any assembly that requires a, a um, uh, tubular or, or um, open frame uh, uh, structure where these things need to be square so that you end up with a vertical stabilizer horizontal stabilizer at 90 degrees and everything's just square you can see how my frames are they're very very square it's because i take the time to refine a lot of these things so that it's easier for not only for the user but for myself because i i, I like to make it easy too for myself to assemble these things and so that they come out as square as possible um, you know, without minimal uh, effort, and so provided you you follow, you know, all, all the things that I just said in this video, you should end up with a square um, tail section, a square frame, and so that's what you're looking here, and this is what I'm showing. This is the reason why I'm showing this, these uh, views here, so you can see how nice and square those frames are, and you can see how beautiful these uh, air, uh, miniature aircrafts are, are also coming out the way I'm designing them. Everything that you see here. Um, is uh, has employs a, a method or employs uh, my own parts even though the design of the, the um, Savage Barber is based on the Piper design so the Piper style is there I mean that that is the Piper style that we're working in. and if we take that base and we start employing our own methods of uh, construction our own uh, design elements then we can call it our, our own design and, and so this is why I'm calling this my own design because this has got you know this is this is a, a motor mount that I designed from scratch based on you know the uh, the size of dimensions where what I wanted uh, what type of motor I wanted here how I wanted the motor mounted how I wanted this mounted to the firewall here the firewall is, uh, firewall is separate there's a connection here that has to be done in order to establish this angle so a lot of these things have to be engineered uh, basically from scratch if you're doing this uh, you know for um, uh, to this level of uh, of uh, uh, work or, or model the seats are also basically from scratch they're a little bit different than those those are a little more complex seats but they're also more weight and so these are a little bit lighter than than the seats uh, the way I'm employing my um, uh, the floor here is also uh, you know it's got some in uh, my microflame method so attaching that to the frame so that when you end up with this assembly you end up with a nice solid lightweight structure the way I'm doing my landing gear with a wire here and embedding that into the um, 3D printed part is also a MIA microflight uh, a method in, in design because uh, this is something that I, I came up with having done various types of landing gears um, and, I, and I have some other airplanes that I you know that I show here I mean there's so many ways to do this here's another Piper that I did as a uh, just as a test uh, model in view that I was going to do these better ones and so that one flies pretty nice but I had to do you know all the white sections here I had to modify this slightly so that I can get the performance that I was looking for so all that information is uh, 
taken into consideration when I designed something like this and I started refining and that's why you see so many variations of this. Plus is also I like I like to make various sizes. I just like to, you know, when I do a, um, uh, an aircraft uh, design, I like to um, make various sizes because I may be in the mood to fly a little one in front of my cul-de-sac and I may be in the mood one another day to go to the park and I maybe another day I may go to the, you know, the, the, the full uh, large uh, RC scale uh, flying field, you know, where it's, I can fly, you know, the bigger stuff such as, uh, you know, these quarter scale air, aircraft that I have here. There's another one here. The blue one is sitting, the blue one is sitting right there. And I, you know, I showed these in other videos. These are all slow flyers uh, and slow flyers because uh, I don't like mass in my aircraft. That's another one that I just recently did, and there's a miniature version of that. So all my uh, aircrafts are ultralight, in true, true ultralight uh, uh, aircraft, uh, very lightweight. This is four ounces, and this has got a, um, it's almost a meter in uh, in wingspan, and it's four ounces. You know, you can, you know, go do the math there, and and and, and uh, you can figure out, you know, how how you can at least imagine how well these things fly at that weight and with that kind of wingspan so very similar uh, um, all that information all that experience has been employed on these particular designs here which is uh, um, in consideration for a kit I mean I want to put out uh, my own kit and like I said this is a the, the way I like doing these things here at Mia Microflight and you will see this you will not see this in any other aircraft because all these things have been done from bottom up I mean I uh, it's very easy to look at some, something else and, and copy it, but I don't. I don't like doing that. I like to basically start from scratch, start with the uh, with the drawing of the real thing uh, in CAD, and then work my my own uh, my own ways of doing things because there are so many ways that you can build a frame, and this is my way uh, of attaching things and, and doing things. And you can see this has some uh, some elements that you probably won't see um, in in other aircraft. Um, not uh, prior to this video, so <laughs> so um, I, I just thought I'd point that out because uh, sometimes I get people that uh, uh, that don't understand that. Anyway, this is where I'm at right here. I'm still um, making uh, some additional parts here, and all I have to do is uh, make the wing here. Uh, the stabilizers are, are probably going to be foam, just like this. These these are inserts for that one, and this is just going to be one piece uh, 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 pieces, and it's got my own hinge system here, as you can see here, very fluid, uh, 3D printed uh, hinge uh, system with the control cord already attached to that. Very simple, uh, very uh, methodical, and very logical. You know, you don't want to be. Uh, there is no need for all this 3D printing here. Here. Um, when you can, uh, when you're looking for something that uh, wants to have a high performance and uh, lightweight and, and durable. Anyway, this is Mario with MIA Microflight, and these are my MIA Piper Light aircraft, Piper Ultra Lights, as I think the proper name should be employed to these uh, aircrafts because it is a Piper design and it's an ultra light by the fact that it's an open frame design. Thanks for watching.